All right, so in this video, we're going to do another example of finding the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix using determinants and cofactors. So here we're going to find the inverse of this matrix 3, negative 1, 2, 5, 1, 0, negative 2, 3, 4. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off by finding the determinant of this matrix. So again, the way I do it is I always just expand along the first row. It would actually be easier to expand along the second row because there's a 0 in there. But whatever. So let's see. We'll take 3 times, uh, we'll have 1, 0, 3, and 4. And then we'll use negative, well, negative 1. And it looks like we'll have 5, 0, negative 2, and 4. And let's see, then we'll have positive 2. And then we'll need the uh, determinant determined by the values. It looks like 5, 1, negative 2, and 3. So let's see, if we compute this, we'll get 3 times, it looks like uh, 4 minus 0, we'll get a positive 1, 5 times 4 is 20, um, again it looks like minus 0, plus 2 times, let's see, 5 times 3 is 15, 15 minus negative 2 will be 15 plus 2, or 17, so it looks like we're getting 3 times 4, which is 12, plus 20, plus 34, let's see, what is that, 32 plus 34, sounds like uh, 66 here as the value of our determinant. So we'll come back to that in a second, we'll use that uh, again here in a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is, is use the cofactors, so let's see. kind of a long process here, but, you know, those are the breaks sometimes in mathematics. Um, so let's see here. I'm going to make this cofactor matrix. So it looks like our first uh, determinant, we would use 1, 0, 3, and 4. And again, I'll fill in the signs here in a moment. If we cover up the first row and the second column, we would have 5, 0, negative 2, and 4. And then if we cover up the first row and the third column, it looks like we would have 5, 1, negative 2, and 3. Let's see, if we cover up the second row in the first column, we would have negative 1, 2, 3, and 4. If we cover up the second row in the second column, we'll have 3, 2, negative 2, and 4. If we cover up the second row and third column, we'll be left with 3, negative 1, uh, negative 2 and 3. And lastly, if we cover up the third row in the first column, we'll have negative 1, 2, 1, and 0. If we cover up the third row second column, we'll have 3, 2, 5, and 0. And if we cover up the last row in the last column, we'll have 3, negative 1, 5, and 1. Again, I also have to uh, change the signs here, so we'll use positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So let's see if we can't compute these without too much trouble. Let's see, we would get 4 minus 0, so our first entry would be 4. It looks like we would get 20 minus 0, but we have to account for the negative, so we'll get negative 20. Looks like we'll get 15 minus negative 2, or 15 plus 2, which will be 17. Let's see, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. It looks like we get negative 4 minus 6, which would be negative 10, but the extra negative makes it positive 10. It looks like we'll get 12 minus negative 4, or 12 plus 4. 12 plus 4 will be 16. 3 times 3 is 9, we'll get 9 minus 2, 9 minus 2 will be 7, but we have to account for the negative. Uh, it looks like we get 0 minus 2, or negative 2, we'll get 0 minus 10, so we'll get negative 10 for the determinant, but the extra negative will make it a positive 10. And then it looks like we get 3 minus negative 5, so 3 minus negative 5 will be 3 plus 5, or 8. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is now we have to take this matrix and we have to, again, reflect things about the diagonal. 
So I'm going to reflect my values about the diagonal. Okay, so I'm going to leave the 4, the 16, and the 8 alone. But now my 10 and negative 20 will switch spots. So we'll get negative 20 and positive 10. My negative 2 and 17 will switch spots. So we'll get 17, negative 2. Lastly, my 10 and negative 7 switch spots. And then it says what we have to do is we have to take 1 over the determinant. And again, we said our determinant here had value 66. So we'll get 1 over 66. That's going to be A inverse. So the last thing we have to do is simply just distribute. So we'll get 4 over 66. We'll get 10 over 66. We'll get negative 2 over 66. We'll get negative 20 over 66. Um, it looks like we'll get 16 over 66, positive 10 over 66. We'll get 17 over 66 negative 7 over 66, and 8 over 66 um, as our inverse matrix now. So you can clearly simplify these numbers down, you know, 2 over 33, 5 over 33, negative 1 over 33. Um, I guess let's go ahead and do it. So let's see, it looks like the first one will turn into 2 over 33. It looks like we'll get 5 over 33, negative 1 over 33. Um, let's see, we'll get uh, negative 10 over 33. It looks like 8 over 33, um, 5 over 33, 17 over 66 doesn't reduce, neither does negative 7 over 66. Let's see, we could make 8 over 66 into 4 over 33. And again, we have now found our inverse matrix.